one of the smartest white men on this side of heaven is here. I think he should run for president after the great white hope is done. Bill Lockwood is here. Bill is a writer of uh, a uh, writer at American Liberty with Bill Lockwood and radio host, teacher in Wichita Falls, Texas. And I don't think that was written very well, but that's who he is. And uh, he's also a pastor, a preacher at our part church of Christ. Bill, good morning. Happy White History Month. Good morning, Jesse. How are you today? Amazing. How you doing? Good to be here with you. Yeah, man. Good to have you back. I'm doing great. That's good. I couldn't sleep all night. Just excited to be here. <laughs> I appreciate that. And, <laughs> and you know we're celebrating White History Month, right? I, I found that out yesterday. I had forgotten that July was White History Month. And doesn't you <laughs> doesn't July just feels white? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it before, but I guess that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you have the 4th of July, summertime, relaxation, reflection time. People tend to take a vacation. So it's raining in your neighborhood. You know what it is? It's pouring down rain. We've had two inches of rain since uh, about uh, midnight last night or 10 o'clock. It's been pouring down. Amazing. So that's why you think it's coming off that hurricane. Yeah, because we're not. Yeah, that's why the connection's a little bit. Yeah. Is there anything we can do about that? Uh, no, I did what I could. Huh? I did what I could. Oh, okay. Okay, Bill, we'll we'll yeah, work with we'll, we'll have to work with it. It's not coming across clear. Okay, I'll I'll try to speak slowly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bill, I want to ask this, and you didn't know that I was gonna. Use phone and Skype if need to be. What does that mean? If we need to, we'll switch to this. To the phone and then Skype. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Bill, who do you, you didn't know I was going to ask this because I just thought about this this morning. In the inner cities around the country, okay. the, big, the big cities, is really just out of control. Mm -hmm. Crime and a terrorist attack. In Chicago, uh, black on black crime is through the roof. It's just out of control. Right. The uh, president have asked to bring have is willing to bring in the military to stop it. The uh, mayors and governors, the uh, Democratic mayors and governors don't want it. Um, who do you blame, the government or the people, for what they're getting? Well, you know, I, I think the blame goes a, a long way back. I think it goes all the way back to the welfare system. I think the welfare system has created a, a state-sponsored family in which there's no father in the home, and these, these children are out of control. They've never learned to respect any authority in the home, in the school, in the streets, and, and they're not going to respect God nor the authority from the President of the United States. And uh, the Democrats are, I think they're traitors. I believe that they have sold America down the river a long time ago. And uh, Lori Lightfoot right there in Chicago, uh, she, you know, she took down the Columbus statue the other day. But uh, she, had, uh, she had police officers surrounding her house in case violence erupted. And yet, at the same time, she is continuing to preach, take away the guns and the right of people for self-defense in your own home. What, what's happening is the, the Democrats are saying, we're going to turn violence loose and you are on your own. And that's exactly what's happening. And, uh, but I think it goes back primarily to the welfare state, to tell you the truth. And so it's the, it's the government to blame or the people for that? Because you mentioned Laura Lightfoot. Well, the people. Are you mentioned Laura Lightfoot, yeah. the, uh, the bl black radical lesbian mayor of Chicago, right? The people knew right. that she was a lesbian. They knew she had a so-called lesbian wife, and yet they elected right. her. And when asked how she's doing, you know, why don't she do something? They said, well, we like her. She's from the neighborhood, and we like her. Why would the people elect a radical, democratic lesbian and expect things to get better? 
they are getting what they deserve because there's no truth in her. She's a Democrat. She's a lesbian. She's flaunting this woman around as though it's normal. Why would the people think that if they elected her that they would get better? Yeah, because the people have emptied themselves of any moral content themselves. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's no or very little moral content in the hearts of many, many people in America. Yeah. And uh, we, have, we have actually elected these leaders. We put them in place. But we've also sat by and watched the Bible being taken out of schools, the Bible being taken out of the public square, morality and religion taken out. We watched Obama put homosexual marriage in place. We've, we have not stood up as people. And preachers in the pulpits have not been preaching the truth on homosexuality, on all of these things that you've mentioned. They've not preached the truth on it. We've just tiptoed around the subjects. And so the people ultimately are to blame, and we're going to eat the fruit of our doings. So the people are getting what they deserve then, right? All across this country. I don't hear anyone saying that. And it's just a lot, all the blame is on no. the government, and the government is wrong. But if the people are wrong, the people call they're going to elect the type of government that they are. Corrupt That's people. Exactly right. Corrupt people elect corrupt government. That that is exactly the formula of the founding fathers, Jesse. And that is that if we're going to have morality in our country, then we need to re, we need to elect people who reflect the same morality. But we we have gone way past that. We're long long past it in America. We have. I, I guess for the last uh, 7,500 years, we've been electing people who are nothing but power-hungry uh, mongers is basically what basically happened. And when you get one little conservative in there, such as Ronald Reagan, uh, they continue to hate on him even to this day. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's what's happening. We need to get you on the phone, Bill, but stay on the Skype because you're not coming. Your, your uh, okay. uh, appearance on here is too important not to get it all. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir, I'm here. All right. I think this is better. I want you to respond to one more thing, and then I, we'll get into why you're here. And this is related to it anyway. Okay. This is from Breitbart. A Michigan school board has approved a Black Lives Matter resolution that states its community is a primarily, primarily white school district that occurred as a result of racist housing policies and intention and intentionally urban planning that prevented people of color from entering ever in, or even entering white space. So this school district has approved a resolution that saying that they intentionally kept the blacks out of the district by uh, raising the property rate because they didn't want black people entering in white people's space. The school has agreed to that policy or resolution. What do you think about that? Well, you know what, uh, Jesse, this, this is setting people up for what Obama had, and it was still in the HUD department until until it's very recently, Ben Carson started talking about it. But I've been talking about it on the radio for a long time. Tom DeWeese in, uh, in uh, Virginia has been talking about it for a long time. And that's the Affirmatively Fair Housing. Uh, I think it's called the Affirmatively Fair Housing Act. But what it is, is that the Department of HUD is giving grant block money to neighborhoods with, the, with stipulations. And those stipulations are that you must put families of color in those particular areas, and they want to read this district families, redistrict uh, neighborhoods, housing districts, and everything. And so they're basically saying all of it's racist, and we need to actually forcibly, by by uh, giving them money, grant block money to have integrated neighborhoods. So, but it's all based upon the premise that we're all racist. That's what Lyndon Johnson set for. We're all racist, and it continues that we're all racist, just like Shelby Steele talked in his book. That's the premise upon which all of this is built, and they're going to talk about racism. People ask me, where does it stop? It doesn't stop. It never stops. This is how, it, this is how evil continues to work. That is, they continue to want to bash America for being racist. You know, even President Obama, 
just the other day in an interview with, uh, I guess it was Joe Biden, made the statement. He said, well, you know, uh, it's better for people uh, named uh, Joe or something or John than Jamal to get a job. You know what? Maybe he should tell us how a black man could have made the president of the United States with white votes if he's still all about this critical race theory. But this is what they do. That's all they have. They have no other option to go to. And so they're going to continue it. It's a matter of hatred. And this is the uh, same school board that uh, want to stop the suspension of black student um, that has... I don't understand his writing. I can't read to writing it. <laughs> but for what it is, there are a lot of black students that committed violent crimes and things like that. And this right. school board wants to stop suspending black children in that school district that commit crimes. And that means that if these kids go, black kids go into the white community schools, the crime rate right. is going to go up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We are simply empowering more evil and more misbehavior. That's all we're doing. You know, uh, this has been going on also for a long, long time. Uh, One of the members of the uh, Students for Democratic Society in the 1960s, which is a pro-communist organization, was Bart Lubau. Bart Lubau set forward, and it started in Cook County, Illinois, in Chicago area, the Chicago area, where he had a practice what was called, or he was pushing in juvenile detention programs, the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative. Basically, it set quotas for those who come into juvenile detention facilities. He simply asked the question, how many blacks and Mexicans and whites in proportion are in there? And when we find more blacks than are in the, in the, in the population generally, then he says that is proof of systemic racism. That they are assuming, they're assuming the entire argument, and no one's calling their hand on it. I say that's absolutely wrong. Their assumptions is wrong. What's happening is in the black communities, we have immorality at skyrocketing, yeah. just as we do with fatherless families. Fatherless homes in black families and black communities are 70 percent, 70. That is that's a measurable statistic. And that's the that's what's happening. But no one's questioning their assumption. Their assumption is we're all racist. That's why whites live together. together. And that's why blacks are congregating together. You know what? That, that's the assumption, and it's a wrong assumption. What is, I, I know the answer to this question already, but what is wrong with white men and women that they're just laying down and allowing this to happen? We, South Africa is happening in America right now to the full, it's in the, I mean, upscale now. And eventually these blacks are going to take the land away from white people they're already changing the police departments around the country, and that means that the whites will not be protected by police officers. What is wrong with the white people in a Christian nation, Judeo-Christian nation, that they are allowing this to happen? They see it happen, but they won't do anything or say anything. You know what, Jesse? This is so sad, but it comes to just ultimate weakness and spinelessness. That's what it is. And uh, I, there's, I have an article that I uh, read the other day in, called Natural News, and I think his name is Mike Adams, and he said, America is now a failed state. And he goes through it, and he talks about how we failed in so many areas, and he says, Where, how did it happen? And his number one point is that the pulpits have failed to point out sin in America. Yeah. We have preachers and pulpits that are so weak, they are no longer preaching on sin, they have capitulated on lesbianism, women in the pulpits. That, well, that's something the Bible tells us that should not be, but we've right. capitulated that. Now we have preachers saying that homosexuality is something with which you were born, and it just goes on and on from there. So we're not preaching against sin. We're not preaching against these things, and we're just preaching, you know, how to be a good neighbor and uh, how to be a good husband, and, and that's about where we leave it. And that's all that's, all that's going on. And so that's where we, it begins. But I think it does spell out that there is innate weakness. I don't know if it's innate, but we have weakness that is built into so many people anymore. Yeah. I noticed that on a Democratic ticket, they are trying to find for mayor, and they're looking for a so-called black, pre- a black, I mean, they're looking for a vice president, and they're looking for a black female to run with Joe Biden. 
And if right. you look at the inner cities around the country now, most of the cities, or many of them, are the mayors are black females, and and the governors are, are females. Not all, but most. And look at how everything is just going out of control. And I'm thinking, why do they think that black women can run anything? Look how they screwed up the kids when the fathers left the home. Look how violent and gang members, all that stuff rose, came to the forefront when the men left and the women took over. How do they think that electing a black female is going to make things better? You know, they don't. We're, we're just we're just uh, continuing to toss roses to the to the mantra of the day, and that is we have to have more females in leadership position. See, that's something that we have already. We have uh, basically unspoken quotas on this. We talked about how many females are in different places in the workplace. For example, here's an illustration. Uh, Robert Bork writes about this several years ago in his book, The Tempting of America. He talks about how there is so much political and social pressure on the Air Force and Navy in the pilot training programs to have female pilots in their in the cockpit. Amazing. So what are they, so you can there, there's an instructor pilot, he can red flag anybody, he says, you know, Jesse Lee Peterson didn't fly this this particular pattern correctly, he didn't do correctly, and they red flag. Too many red flags and you're out of pilot training. But if you red flag a woman, you have to go answer to the base commander as to why in the world you would possibly red flag a woman, and you have to have some kind of answer for it. Why is that? Because the pressure has been there to put a woman in the cockpit in those places. So, as Robert Bork talks about, we had a woman pilot crash one of those planes right off the carrier deck. But all of it points to the fact that we've lowered standards for females in many positions, and we've lowered standards also for blacks. That's what Shelby Steele points out. We're lowering the standards. Yeah. This is what's happening in schools, where you have diversity is, is, a, is a value in and of itself. So we'll have we need to read from black authors. And Shelby Steele tells the point, he says, look, he says, I was sitting in the college uh, boardroom when we were talking in the English department about this very thing. He says they wanted to get black writers, and then we want the students to read black writers. And they went around the room, and he says, I was the only one against it. He's a black man. He said, I'm the only one against it. They were just shocked and bowled over. That shows the white people are so they're just uh, running around trying to, trying to please the blacks on these things. And then he says, no. Why should we in- introduce substandard literature simply so we can have a black author? Yeah. He says, it's ridiculous. But that's what's happening. I want to... probably long you wanted. <laughs> no, that was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> I want to ask you, <laughs> Breitbart is reporting that 1619 Project Editor leading New York Times effort to expand into Hollywood. Can you explain to us what is the 1619 Project? Yes, sir. The 1619 Project is a series of essays and multimedia productions uh, produced by the New York Times, and its leading writer is Nicole Hannah-Jones. And her basic premise is, that 1619 was when a slave ship appeared off the coast of Virginia, Jamestown. Remember, 1607 was founded. Now, 1619, a slave ship came in bringing 20 black slaves. She said this was the real founding of America, and America is founded upon racism, and slavery is its, in its core. So she turns history upside down. She says that racism was built into the system from the beginning, of course, if that's true, then racism would have to be built into the systems of all countries in the world, for <laughs> slavery has been a universal problem. It's not just America. But, but anyway, doing that, and then she goes on and says that the Revolutionary War was fought to protect slavery, and, and, and turning, once again, history upside down. That's the very opposite of what the Founding Fathers said. That's the very opposite of what they wrote right into the Constitution. But that's how she's going. Now she goes on to say, and she says some real ugly things. She says whites are bloodsuckers, that they have destroyed all cultures in the, in, the, uh, in the earth, and it's all due to white problem. They've overturned indigenous peoples, and they use Christianity to do it. So uh, this, this is what uh, Nicole Hannah-Jones is all about. So the 1619 Project is this series of essay, essays, multimedia productions, and they promise to come into your schools and to reteach and the whole thing is to reframe American history to see it through the lens of race and slavery only. So that's, that's what this is all about. And it, it, can, it includes just erasing history, turning history upside down, 
and and in, engendering hate and instilling hate in the minority population. That's that's what this is about. And do they want to bring it to Hollywood in an attempt to deceive the people? Because once you bring it to Hollywood, it's going to get out there. A lot of young people are going to see it and believe that it's true. Oh, yeah, Oprah Winfrey is right on board. She says, this is wonderful. I've never knew American history before I read this material. And so when you get an Oprah Winfrey behind it, that's one Hollywood mogul. And uh, interesting, by the way, how did a black woman get to be some Hollywood mogul if we're all so systemically racist in our system? How did that happen? You know, it's just, but anyway, that's how she says it. But So it is going to be in Hollywood, and they promise to get into your school system also through the, the National Education Association the 1619 Project, and America's founded upon black slavery. Are you familiar with um, a a woman by the name of Robin D'Angelo, and she wrote a book called White Fragility or something? I have heard of it. I have not read that book. I've I've heard some things about it, though. Well, the school around the country are adopting the 1619 Project and a book in this book, this stupid woman write about that stuff too. This is mind blowing to me. I just, I didn't, it really reveals how weak the Christian men are because if Christian men stood up, took back the family, took back the government mm-hmm. and, and all of these things would not be happening. And it just, it really reveal how weak Christians are in America today. That's right. You know what? The, the, Christian right is is now at this point afraid to speak out. You're afraid to wear a MAGA hat out. You're afraid to put a sign out in the yard for you know supporting Trump. You're afraid to speak out because you know very well with it. You see it all over the country now. People being assaulted right and left. You know a black man killed in Minneapolis. A black man standing on the street having a Trump supporting sign yeah. was murdered just the other day. I mean this is what's happening and it's it's. It's of the devil, and people are being slaughtered. And you know what? We're not standing up soon enough because now we did have an incident in Weatherford, Texas, just the other day, where the Black Lives Matter and Antifa came down in mass, and they were coming down to take down a statue in Weatherford, a Confederate statue. And I think they were met by force and, and citizens who came out and said, "No, you're not." Good. So, be a hold yeah. that thought. Let me. Can I hold you over for a few minutes? Sure, that'd be great. All right, hold on for me. So, Bill, tell the folks how. And I have to tell you, folks, when I say this, I'm telling you the truth. He has an amazing radio show that I really want you to listen to on Saturdays and whatever day it's on, because he really, really gave you the real deal um, information that is absolutely true. Bill, tell the folks how to get your radio show, your website, and all the good things that you're doing. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, Bill. Hey. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, thank you, Jesse, for that. You know, the radio show is American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, and uh, the website is the same, AmericanLibertyWithBillLockwood.com. Uh, the radio show is out of Wichita Falls on News Talk 1290 AM, 11 o'clock AM on Saturdays, and it's in Lubbock, Abilene, and San Angelo, Texas, also on the AM dial. But here's, here's one of the great things we started doing. It, it's now on YouTube, and I... I'd like for people to subscribe to that YouTube channel. We have a whole YouTube channel called American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. So we record it just as I'm seeing you here. We record it that way, and you can listen to it at any time and, and watch it uh, on, on the stream there. So uh, anyway, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood is a YouTube channel. I also have another YouTube channel called Writing for the Bible Brand. Sometimes a 45- to 50-minute uh, segment is too long for people, so... Uh, I have a short one, and I just talked about Bible principles and what's happening in the country today, about eight minutes long, and I sit on the horse and do it, and that's another YouTube channel, Writing for the Bible Brand. And if people want to subscribe, that'd be great. I'd be happy, happy for you to do that. Yeah. The website of American Liberty with BillLockwood.com, those are the articles on it. And then I also have articles on Iowa Park Church of Christ, or iowaparkcoc.org. And the uh, the uh, first one that you told us about, that's the podcast that you have? Yes. Well, it's, it's actually a video cast. Oh, okay. uh, a video, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. It's a YouTube channel now. Make sure y'all check it out, folks. You will not be disappointed. 
I think that bill should be heard around the world, all, all the major networks and everywhere, because we got to start to get the truth out there. We got to get the truth out, folks. Bill, I want to uh, ask you about this. Uh, let's see, I wrote it down here. Uh, <laughs> the military is now installing banners or at least taking away the banners that says blue lives matter flag and put it in black lives matter. Tell me that this is not real. This, that's exactly what's happening. You know what this, uh, and I had a good friend in Montgomery, Alabama named John Tackleman. He's a great Christian man, a Christian patriot and a missionary, but he, he writes a letter and I put it on the, on the website and uh, it's written to Donald Trump. And he says, where do you stand on this? He said, here's what's happening. For example, at Maxwell Air Force Base, they had a worker out there, apparently not even an, uh, a, a military personnel, working a, a, on the base and saw a Blue Lives Matter flag, complained about it. They ran around there, and they had the, the military had them take that down. At the same time, the Secretary of the Defense, through the Secretary of Maxwell Air Force Base, put out a letter saying that you might wear Black Lives Matter material or insignias or t-shirts and caps for those civilian workers who are working on the bases so they say because it's not an organized political group so you may wear black lives matter material on it now this is this is astounding into the nth degree when obama was president if if a if a military man wanted to appear in uniform at a, at a trump rally then he would be reprimanded and disciplined by the air force that was completely disallowed. But all of a sudden, or, or if he was to, to stand up in any, in any Constitution seminar and preach and speak at a Constitution seminar that was non-political affiliated, that Air Force man would be punished. But today, this is how the Air Force pushes it from the Secretary of Defense and the Pentagon. If you wear Black Lives Matter paraphernalia or, or goods, or insignias on a military installation, that's fine. We are upside down again. And so Blue Lives Matter, gone, but Black Lives Matter, that's there. So is the military aware that Black Lives Matter was is a radical far-left liberal organization that was started by fat black radical lesbians and that the words Black Lives Matter doesn't mean a thing, it's evil? Are they aware of this? You know they have to be. Those men at the top are, are not dummies, but they are weak. They are not leaders as they need to be, and just as so many leaders in the military, when someone squeaks, they start running around trying to put the grease on the wheel and stop the squeaking, and they just run around trying to please the politically correct crowd. You know, they have, we need... Here's another illustration. Several years ago, at Boise, Idaho... There was a there was at the military base there on the base there was a sign there that said, "Blessed are the peacemakers." It was on the, it was it was a, of a pilot and it had "Blessed are the peacemakers," a Bible passage. Well, someone complained about it, so they got hold of Mikey Weinstein, who is this atheist hardened uh, atheist uh, guy that uh, has a Freedom from Religion Foundation. I've forgotten the name of it, but he calls up General Short, who's who's the general at that base. General Short, he immediately goes into panic mode. He runs around, finds the sign, takes it down, takes it all, everything down that's Bible-related on the base to please these people who are saying we don't need to have that. He should have just said, look, thank you for your call. Goodbye. But yeah. you know what? All they're doing is trying to capitulate and please the politically correct crowd, which is all tilted to Marxist left. And that's what's happening in military installations, too. So it's, once again, a lack of good, strong male leadership. I have uh, interviewed Mikey Weinstein. And for those who don't know, he was the uh, uh, founder of Military Religious Freedom Foundation. Uh, that was the name of his organization. Did okay. you, as a white man, did you know white men were this week before all of this started happening? Yes. Oh, <laughs> you know how I know? Because I've, I've, I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ for over 40 years, Jesse, and I have watched one pulpit after another cave and, and, and refuse to preach things because 
people don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. And so preachers tailor their lessons to what the crowd wants to hear. I've watched it for 40 years. And, and preachers don't want to be pushed down the road, and they don't want to be said, you know, goodbye, you go find another pulpit. So they don't stand up and preach. They don't stand up and, and say what God says on particular subjects. And so you might have anything going on in the congregation. You might have adultery. You might have, uh, you might have homosexuality. You might have uh, theft and, and thievery. But they're not going to stand up and say anything in the pulpit. Not to say that we get up there and we want to make trouble and just kind of ferret out things that is not really, you know, something that's not open and open sin, but they don't want to address trying sins that are open and above for, or open and, and in front of everybody. And so I've seen this weakness. It's just it's pitiful. I, uh, I grew up thinking, and until recently, I always thought that white men were strong because they found it and created the greatest country on this side of heaven. And so I had this impression that they were strong. And, and now, and then when I first started Bond, I was telling white people, y'all need to speak up because black yeah. people hate you and they are trying to destroy you. You're not to blame for slavery and all this stuff that they are saying is not true. And, and then I was told, well, whites are not speaking up because they feel guilty as though they are responsible for the blacks. And now right. I see that it's beyond you. It's just pure fear. And I'm surprised right. to see that. Just like Shelby Steele tells in his book, White Guilt, that's exactly what we're operating on. You know, I heard a preacher say many years ago, and, uh, and he says, you know, a lot of preachers, they'll go to a lectureship, you know, which is way off somewhere, and they will roar like a lion. But they get home, and they're weak as a kitten. They just they just meow like a kitten, <laughs> and that's what that's what people are about too frequently because they're worried about their own paycheck and their so forth. So it is sad, but you know we're operating on that system, and that's how the LBJ set it up in 1964. Yeah, you write about the uh, radical sixties and when American character began to fall apart. Right, and how can well, people read that, Bill? You know what, Shelby Steele is a great writer, and I had never read his material, but he has a book called White Guilt. He wrote it several years ago. It's absolutely fabulous, but his basic premise is that LBJ and the Great Society set it up so that, you know, he, he basically said that the black man has been put down in the past, and we've had racist past, and all that kind of thing. So he says you can't put him on the starting line at this point, and expect him to run the race without some assistance. So we're going to have to give him some assistance. So was born the quota system. But Shelby Steele points out that is that is wrong. That's basically to say the black man cannot do it on his own. He's not responsible, and that's what happens. Responsibility is not with the black man, and so now it's it's all white problem. And so all and so he says whites are practicing what are called disassociation. Disassociation is that we all want to disassociate ourselves. From the white, or from the the racism that supposedly we have inherent in us, and so we run around all the all the time trying to disassociate ourselves in any way we can from being called racist. So we'll vote for a black man to be president because because he's a black man. That was Obama, and I had many people, white people, tell me, well, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll quit saying that we're racist if we get a black man. No, <laughs> it's going to go worse, and that's yeah. what's happened. Yeah. Same thing in the curriculum in schools and so forth. I saw on on um, YouTube last night where whites and some whites in South Africa was having a church service and two black men went in there heavily armed to rob them. I get whatever they else they wanted to do. But fortunately, there was a white guy there who was armed and he was able to take the two black men out before they were able to kill the whites. In South Africa, yeah. they're, they're, ta they're robbing the lands of the whites. They're, they're torturing them and killing them, and they're exterminating them, even though that promise was that would not be the case. But see, this is, this is what we don't want to talk about. Yeah. We don't want to talk about that because, after all, Nelson Mandela is supposed to be some great man, but the truth of the matter is he was a part of a communist organization that practiced necklacing burning tires around people's necks at one point in his life. Yeah. But we don't want to talk about that. 
So the truth is too strong for people, and we have to dilute it down. We have to we have to bow down and say all these things are these are good guys, and that's what's happening over there. Did you know? And then I got to run, Bill. Did you know that Oprah Winfrey was as evil as she is? Because she's happened to promote this lie about racism, and she right. did very well because of white people that Oprah is doing so well. Did you know she was this evil? No, I did not. I, and actually, I didn't. I don't follow Oprah Winfrey. I mean, people have watched her show. I, I refuse to watch that kind of television, and um, I never have watched it. But I, I heard bits and pieces here and there, of course, as everybody does. So, but I did not know that. But I, I've seen what she said lately, and I've been really disgusted. Yeah. So, Bill, I really appreciate you, man. Um, how can people get your show, your information, all your good stuff again? Hey, thank you so much, Jesse, for that. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. Dot com. That's the website. American Liberty with Bill Lockwood is a YouTube channel. Go and subscribe to it, and all the radio shows are on there. And then also writing for the Bible brand. That's another YouTube channel that I do, short lessons, eight to ten minutes at the most. And then also I have the Iowa Park COC.org. I have articles, and, of course, sermons are all online there. So all those places you can find me. Well, Bill, thank you for your time, and uh, we did the best we could with this, despite the weather, so I really appreciate you, man, and we'll have you back. Thank you so much. Lord bless you, Jesse Lee. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate you. Stand for truth. Thank you, Bill. You too, man. I really appreciate that. Okay. Take care. Take care, buddy. Amazing. Check out Bill, folks. You will not be disappointed, all right? every It's just mind-blowing stuff, and that's what we need. Amazing. Let me go quickly to Russ out of Hampton, Virginia. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.